You think you know about relationships, but you're wrong. Listen, there's no magic bullet. I'm teaching life skills. When you sick, you need medicine. It don't always taste good. Nah. But it'll get you better. You, you, you need this medicine. Yeah. It ain't gonna always taste good. But this is what you need. Men and women, bottom line, we need to have the conversation. Your partner wants to give up control, but only if you know how to drive. This is about being the best you you could ever be, whoever you are. I don't care if you're a man, a woman, LGBTQ, space alien. I'll save anybody. I don't care. I'll teach a hedgehog how to have a threesome. What do you mean by that? Look, you don't have to listen to me, but you're wrong. Listen, I know I'm great. And I know you're thinking, Dante, there's no way I could be like you. But you could be me, you know why? Because you know who I was? Before I was me, I was you. you. Man score, 202. Better hear what I've got to say because you won't get it again. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first, because if you don't, they won't. Uh, what's up, Square Pimp Brigade? On this episode, we got a special show. GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted, and I am excited. Uh, Harry, how you feeling? You ready to do this? Uh, doing good, even after the holidays. Uh, but I'm having a tough time keeping these gators down, Dante. I didn't difficult. realize how difficult. difficult it would be, but it's difficult. difficult. We have a special guest, and I know I say that every episode, but this time, <laughs> I, this time I mean it. <laughs> um, this young lady, very, very funny, Comedy Central. Uh, what else you got, Jack? Do you, America, America's Got Talent is what I America's ride with. Got Talent. Um, give it up for Jackie Fabulous, y'all. Give it up for Jackie Fabulous. What it do? You know, what's going on, Mama? It's so good to see you. Good to see you. We bonded that one night. I'm like, oh, will I ever, will I ever see him again? Is he uh, gone forever? <laughs> no, no, I'm I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. So, um, it's yeah. We we it was weird. Uh, I don't know if you know this, Harry, but uh, uh-huh. how we hooked up. So, I've been friends with Ty for a long time, and I've I've heard Jackie's name around for a long time. How long Ty. you been doing it, Jack? Ty Barnett. Uh, Ty Barnett. How long? How long have I what? Been doing comedy. Uh, 16 years total. So I've been hearing Jackie's um name around, but we never actually met. Kind of cross passed. Paths. We we passed each other like maybe at the cellar here yeah. and there, but never really. And then she came in with Ty, and Ty is such a good. He's such a good dude. Like, you know that 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 is the you know I made friends with Ty for a long long time. Aww. So um and then when you came in with Ty, I was like, oh man, I get a chance to to meet and went up and murdered, no, murdered. Please. We did a uh <laughs> we did the backyard. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we did the backyard behind the hospital. So. <laughs> It was That's, fun. That was a fun show. It was fun. It was. That's what fun. comedy is now, though. It's not yeah. doing. <laughs> those are the venues. Yeah, yeah. Like there was a time when you wouldn't, you would be like outside. How much? <laughs> <laughs> I know. I didn't plan on going up. I was just tagging along with Ty. I'm like, we're gonna. I'm. He had a spot, and then I, I, I called the seller and said, hey, can I bring Ty by? And they were like, sure. So we had a night of stand up. I didn't expect it, but it turned out fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. dope. So dope. So funny. Um, Funny, funny stuff. I really, really enjoyed you. Just very, so natural. In all the years, I, you did not disappoint. So. Yeah, it was fun. <laughs> Thank you. Those, those are always the best sets where you're like, ah, ah, what, what the fuck? Let's do it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And. It's funny because a lot of those kids that were going up, like the short kid and the other one, yes. I do a writer's workshop with those guys. Okay. Uh, and I've been punching their stuff up. Sometimes I'll have Harry on sit in with me and we'll, and they'll be, and I'll be, no, I'll just go. I'll just go. Yeah. Dante's no. very quick and cold with them too. It's very, it, it, it took a while to get be. used to it. Yeah. Are you, are you a comic style. too, Harry? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Nice, doing, nice, nice, nice. So yeah. I've been doing stand up for a while and like just but even like Dante's doing it the right way. It just takes so much getting used to because he'll just cut it like, no, 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 stop that. You don't give a fuck <laughs> about that. 
<laughs> and you can see him like just stomp all over this little thing they were excited about. And he's mm-hmm. right, though, because you want to talk about stuff that you care about. You're supposed to write about stuff that you care about. And he's got to stomp them out real quick. It's just yeah, uncomfortable. I'm like, I, or, or they'll have the, you know, they'll have what uh, there'll be a girl who have the white girl syndrome. And she'll be like, so I was hanging out with my mother and she was and they do the the same uh-huh. time. Like, stop, 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 stop. What are uh-huh. you doing? <laughs> and uh, I'm like I can't, I can't, I can't. I'm, I'm just not gonna let you sing your story out. So <laughs> that's always it, whenever, whenever I give advice to comics because I've taught before. I haven't done it in a long time. I always say I want to hear what you think about so and so for real. I don't want right. to hear abstract jokes about cashews. And everybody <laughs> at, at some point they all wanted to kind of mimic Seinfeld and uh-huh. take a take an abstract thought or an yeah. observation that they don't give a shit about. I don't care about nothing really unless I've experienced it right, or right. I, someone I know did. So right, I like right. to get them right, cut them off at the knees. Like no, uh, don't yeah, do yeah. that. Yeah, because <laughs> I I go if you don't care about it, why would I give? It? Why would an audience? You don't yes. even have the skill set to. To, to make Riff. me care about yeah. something that I don't really care about. I go, so if you start off with not caring about it and then you do it a hundred times, do the same joke a hundred, like how could you possibly, I'm going to know. It, it just, it's really authentic. It's one thing mm-hmm. about comedy it's always taught me, you know, the more authentic you are, uh, the more, um, you know, the, the, then people they may not even like what you're talking about, but if it's true to you, they'll they'll go on the ride. The more you, you know? can relate yeah. to people, the more people yeah, can yeah. relate to you. You know, it's a scary thing, and what comes to mind: the more you, the more you talk about what really matters to you or what actually happened to you. And this is a horrible word to use in stand up, but the easier stand up can get for you because you're not trying to figure out what's funny about this random topic, as opposed to I went out with a guy last night and he had on socks with slippers. Mm-hmm. But I, you know, I, but I still fuck them because, you know, you know, be real. Right, like, right, right. Whatever, honest, whatever's yeah. in your head that you might yeah. think is taboo, that's yeah. what we want to hear. We want to hear about that. But, you know, it takes a, it's kind of, yeah and no, because it's kind of like they have to learn. It's kind of like you have to learn structure and then, yes. and then know the structure so well that you don't even have to think about it. So that yes. when you, when you talk, you're already talking yeah. in that structure. It's just, like, uh, yeah. Like the thoughts in your head, you can't just get on stage and be like, so blah, 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 and there's yeah. no structure. The audience is like, what is a TED Talk? I don't know what you're doing up there. But right, if you teach right. them the structure, they can put any, they can insert the facts easily. Yeah. So yeah. It, this is a funny thing why I really wanted to have you on too, because I mean, so the, the show is a relationship show, and mm-hmm. you, were doing, you, were doing these, you were doing this bit about, about you want your pussy to get a vacation right <laughs> oh I, I know i'm gonna write that down that was uh, random yeah was oh random. wow so you know what's <laughs> funny about that it what? was um because it was so authentic do you know what i mean you you were literally like oh god yeah. and so what's funny is because i'm an old i'm an old horny dude you know what mm-hmm. i mean like i'm an old dude you know i know what i'm doing Yes. I know I, I'm not fumbling around in the dark, and uh-huh. I always say so. A lot of times, we'll be I'll be counseling guys who are older, and they instant be, they think because they don't have the youth that they don't that they have nothing to offer because everything that they're offering is you know they think every girl wants a guy with a six pack and it is the tan and yeah. it, it. No, it, it's individual. And to be honest, I'll tell you where that joke came from. I was on IG Live with Yamanika. I know you know Yam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And we were talking about porn. And I said to her, I can't watch black girls in porn because their their pussies look like they look too rough. They look too beat up. Uh-huh. And, I'm, and, I, and I'm like, and I said, girl, you're pretty, but your pussy need to go to Aruba. Need to go on vacation. <laughs> right, uh-huh. right, 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 right. And that was me and Yamanika just talking honestly. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. I, when, when I said that, you know, I'm like, usually when I say things in conversation, I, if they're funny, Mm-hmm. I remember them, and that ends up in my set. 
black, so black. that's what I, I brought that to that rooftop show and I just changed it around and, and I put my pussy in instead of the right, porn right, star. Right, right, right. Because, right, it, right. because, it, because it's real. I had um, I had a boyfriend that that's all we would do when I go over his house. Right, right, and right. I, and I, that, that's when I'm like, you know what? I'm glad I'm not there because I need a rest. I need. Well, is it an older dude? It was an older dude or younger No, no, no. Same age. Same, same age. Same age. Yeah, same age. Just very healthy dude. Very healthy dude with a, yeah, yeah. a sex drive like mine, which is a problem. So Yeah, yeah. Know. Yeah, somebody, you, <laughs> nothing gets done. Nothing gets done. No, nothing gets done. Nothing. <laughs> yeah, it's funny because I always say like an older, like I'm 54 and and I like I always say this. I got a dude. Like if you need something, I got a dude. I either know a dude or I know a dude who knows a dude. Yes. Yeah. If your if your sink is leaky, if your transmission is going, uh, oh, you trying to oh you trying to get some diamond earrings? Hold on, let me call my man in the diamond. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I need a dude like you. Thank you. I need a. I don't have a dude. I need I, a dude. I got it. I always got it. I either am the dude, know the dude, or know a dude who knows the dude. You know, I love sometimes that. I have to ask Dante for where I'm like, do you know a guy who's got insulin? And it's a 50 50 shot. It's a 50 50 shot. <laughs> you never know. I'm like, well, he's that. out. But I mean, if you had let me know earlier this month, I could have got you all the insulin you wanted. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> but it, it's, I like that. it is it is a matter of I mean, you know, there's always there's a different. 50 year old, you know, where somebody who doesn't take care of themselves and stuff. But I'm saying, yeah, but you could be a 20 year old who doesn't take care of himself, too. Right. That's the oh, other right. thing. You, you don't have, it's not an age thing. Because listen, we all know, we've all seen that 50 year old do it at the gym or whatever, or playing yeah. hockey or whatever. It's like they're in shape and you're like, that's what I want to be. And you, yeah. we've also yeah. seen people who don't do shit in their 20s yeah. at the same I time. Should, so I've it's had, all where you make it. I've had physical moments with dudes that were. A decade younger than me, right. and we and we would have sex once, and I'd be like, and I would we would be finished and water chit chat. I'm like ready to go again, and mm-hmm. I've had guys that are 35 be like, I'm not 20 anymore, Jackie. Mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah, but you're still 15 years younger than me. Yeah, yeah. What's, yeah. what's wrong with you? So yeah. age does not determine health and ability at all. Oh yeah, you're right. But there's you're a right. lot of things that people do, like a diet is a huge portion of it. Diet and exercise. I know that. And sleep Look, and sleep, and sleep, mm. sleep as well as part of that. The nutrition thing, yeah. like I'm much better now than I was in my 20s, to be honest, because I'm in, uh, I work out more. I, I'm eating right. I'm not eating fast food. And you don't you don't realize like how much like, mm-hmm. you know what? Everything that you do to your body somehow affects your dick. You don't realize it until Every- <laughs> everything. If you hit your Literally. finger with a hammer, it's I don't know how much, but it affects it a little bit. Yeah, psychological. Everything like affects your penis. It affects I got chap. I got chap lips, dick. I got. Yeah. Chap, <laughs> I got my everything. lips to chap. Something's wrong with my dick. Yeah, I mean it all. It all. But I mean that it's a it's a holistic view of things because we are one in the same. It's like even when you talk about comedy and you talk about honesty and there's a there's an openness and an honesty to it. Um, you can't when it when all said and done, you can't fake it. You know, I mean, that's the great thing about comedy is like you can't fake it, dog. It's they, no. you either got the chops or you don't. And if you don't, well, you, you'll know you're not. But the same thing is yeah. true. I always say this. You know, there's always dudes talking about they want to do a threesome and this. And that. I'm like, a lot of you motherfuckers can't fuck one person. Properly. I've shut I've shut down that request with guys. I'm like, you cannot stay awake to find out who did it on a Law and Order episode. <laughs> and you want to fuck two women? I'm like, you are exhausted after me and not even like a long session. Well, a not, regular... a, not, a, not a session. No. <laughs> we made love for 20 minutes and you are gone. You're knocked out. And you're like, and they, and, and they would be nervous about asking. They're like, Jackie, you know, and I'm like, I know what you're trying to get to. And let me tell you, the answer is no. Not because I'm shy, but because you're not able to. Right, I know right, you can't. Right. Right, right, right. Because <laughs> I'm know? not gonna be sitting around fucking twiddling my thumbs while you figure it out either. I mean, that's that's. I mean, unless you want to go get snacks, unless you want to be the beverage guy or the and snack I'm gonna tell you guy. Something. It's Towel really guy. Get not some exactly something. The, the window guy open the window, get some air circulating. It's you really not bells. that much fun. It's really not. It's a lot of work. Like if you're, yeah. if you're, what up, Kilo? Look who joined us. What up, Dre? Can Andre you D. Thompson, who is cho- Yo, as his background, it just says cereal. This is like performance art now, Andre. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm trying. I try. Uh, what up, Jackie? Andre, what up, baby? Andre's Blanksy. He's what not- the fuck is that? <laughs> what was that? that? Huh? 
Uh, oh, <laughs> that that's, he me. got the volcano <laughs> with the bag. You know the vape. Yeah. What is it? There's a it, bag full weed. of weed. You just have to know that but it's full of weed, of Jackie. Burning it. What? You uh, use a vaporizing technology. You mean it's a, a even a happy bag, of, a black, a glad bag? And, no, it comes with that. Yeah. See the plastic that, thing on the end? That that looks ridiculous. Well, but it's good for your lungs. This was this was uh the one of the first vaporizers. Yeah. So what That's, happens is when people who start getting really into weed, they get bored. So they have to find new ways of ingesting the weed. And they're like, oh, this is a weed fingernail polish. You, you put a little bit revolutionizing the industry, Harry this CBD oil. You put it you put it on your fingernails. Look, Dante <laughs> has an apparatus himself. That's just comedy to me. It's just funny. It's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> Andre like, has I want to get high. Well, you never, but Jack, you never you just start smoking. All right. I would say in the last two years, I've I've figured yeah, out what is good this, for and when is too much and when is fun. This is this thing was the that was the the, the gold standard, the vaporizing ghost that that big ass bag. Like I that, have never I know I have met some professional pineheads. I have seen never the, seen anybody pull out a dry cleaner fucking plastic where's the, bag. Where's, 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 where's the volcano, <laughs> Dre? Show her the volcano. <laughs> Andre will oh, do a me, Andre will do a balloon finish. animal filled with weed just for just for I like party. Little, uh, What's that? You know? That's the volcano. That's how you cook. That's you how you me? fill if it I, up. If okay, if I came to your house for sex and you were like, oh, you, we lit. No, no, no. And you were like, you want to <laughs> be high, high in the motherfucker. And you said, Jackie, do you want to get high? And I said yes. And you came back with any of that shit. I'd be like, <laughs> I'd be like, where are my car keys? I'm leaving. Cause I'm not doing crack. I don't know I'm, you. I'm not doing crack. <laughs> that was the that was the goal. Not gonna standard. fuck with the that booger sugar. Company. Why are you sweating so much? That's why you sweating so hard. What are you doing? Ah, uh, cause what had happened was I had checked the email waiting for Harry's uh email for the Zoom and, link, and but then for, I ain't see it. So you went for a drive right? instead. So yes, yeah, so I was like, he not doing it. Let me go do some push-ups. I don't fucked around. Are you in jail? Are you in that jail was... right now? Are you zooming from prison? <laughs> this is Rikers. They yeah. upgraded the facilities. <laughs> <laughs> they got they got Jackie. HD cameras. Everyone's doing a podcast now, Jackie. You don't. Understand. I know. And I'm like, he is in the joint right now. <laughs> and yeah, like, get off the phone. He's in the jail. Phone right check, right nigga. Right phone right. check. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, son, let me do that podcast. Let me do your podcast. I yo, I, yo, I want to buy a pillow from you later, nigga. Don't go nowhere. Yo, I, hurry up. They, they getting ready to shut us down. Exactly. <laughs> it's time, it's time to go to bed. Lockdown. Lock, <laughs> lockdown. Let's do it. Oh my we got to finish. I, oh, I got a hard man. out at 759. <laughs> <laughs> Real hard. Correction. Stay out of jail. Correction uh, officer hard. So hilarious. I could never have a nigga tell me when to go to bed. Nah, bro. I'll follow the law. Son, ain't no game. This is that's, like, that's, that's your problem with prison, by the way, Andre. Is that that's they it. Tell you I don't want nobody to telling to me when to go to bed it's and I got to shower with a group of it's niggas. It's not I'm the not sexual with. assaults and the stabbings. You're like, bedtime? I don't, <laughs> I I don't want to go to sleep. Can I take my headphones off? at a Whole Foods. Yeah. My battery's dying. I don't want to. Yeah. Okay, no worries. No worries. No worries we'll just, we're just, all right. Now, Andre, you can add, and you can w see Andre's background, as always, when you go to the YouTube channel, Man School 202, the YouTube. You have chosen what looks like a blurred out picture of a Cinnabon, and it says cereal no, in the no, handwriting of a three year old. I was eating some cereal, and I felt inspired mm. by the texture, and then mm. I wrote cereal on it. Are you this a sounds like a, Andre? This sounds like an art project you yes, did at the last Jack, minute, Andre. We have met previously. Where? Uh, Sherrod Small's podcast. Before people couldn't talk to people in public. We were on a podcast together? AKA Race Yo. Wars. Race Wars. I know. Race I've Wars. I've only done it twice or two or three. Oh, in his studio at the stand. It's downstairs. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I remember <laughs> now. Mm. Who? He was giving out... Tin like copper cans or something like that, and then he gave me a, 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 a wonderful copper mug. Oh something. yes, yes, you look different. You're all sweaty with a hood on. That's why I'm like, who is it? Yeah, I look criminal right now. <laughs> <laughs> Before you met me, I had a pink t-shirt, a clean you were cut. So, now I look like I sell loose. You were so presentable. That's why I'm like, who's this young man? <laughs> you looking, right? you looking mad to me, Rice, right now, son. <laughs> I look, I look like a suspect. It ain't good. You, but, if you uh, approach me on the subway in this getup, I'd be like, hey, dog, I get off next stop. I don't want to chit chat. Nah, if I'm on the subway in 
in this, you're going to hear me say, Showtime! <laughs> Showtime! <laughs> I'll put my hat out, you feel me? <laughs> I'm swinging around the arm and <laughs> the arm holder. <laughs> Get busy. Oh, hilarious. Yeah. I got, I got Jackie smin out with the fucking shatter. With the shatter? Oh, you. I don't know what. You know what? I'm not going to lie. It didn't make me that high. It made me relax. It didn't mm. make me like, you know, like, night. yeah, it made me very like, Chill to the point where I always seem to try new stuff or get kind of funny, mm-hmm. but like, too, too relaxed when I'm hanging out with Ty, and then yeah. I become, then I become his problem, his burden. Yeah. <laughs> then he's yeah. like, Jackie, get off the street. You That's know, why he kept Ty. shutting you down. I was passing, and he was like, Yo, yo, chill. I was like, <laughs> I probably do it on purpose because I like to see him get frazzled. Like, put your clothes back on. We outside. <laughs> <laughs> That's Todd too. Mm-hmm. That yeah, is so very, Todd. Like, a father. Like, come on, Jackie. Yeah. I'm, like, I'm grown. Come sir. on now. Yeah, exactly. What's, we are out. What is wrong? Where, 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 <laughs> put your titty away. Put your titty away. We are so, outside. <laughs> so, Jackie, let me ask you since do you think it's different? You're a comic, you're doing all this adventurous stuff. Is it different being your age than it would be for the average person, the average woman, as far no, as like I'm, dealing with men? No, I'm 49. And. I've never, for someone who has not had success that you would imagine what its success is in terms of love, I, I have a very healthy attitude towards dating and sex and men. That's probably why most of my male friends, or most of my friends are dudes. Like I, I, I'm very comfortable hanging around guys because I think the problem with a lot of women, all ages, is they try and make men this special kind of species. Like that, I can, I, I, you're not human beings. Where I'm like, no, they're just people, they're, but they're, you know, with different anatomy. It, if you treat them like people before they're men. Yeah, also, we're a lot more simple. Yes. Like, it I, is what it is. Like, I tell women all the time, like, they're not stupid. They're simple. You guys are working too hard, doing too much. Yeah. And I realize whenever I do date someone seriously, I'm like, all he wants is food, sex, and to be left alone and to tell his story for the eight, 87th time. <laughs> they don't need much more than that. The you same the story. story. You don't mind the same, same story. The same man story. Need some writer, bro. <laughs> <laughs> they don't, That's a good man. They don't need, need much. They don't need much. And I don't. I have never been too. Uh, I don't make it controversial to deal with men. I'm comfortable around them. And I've never been. I, I used to live in LA 20 years. And I'd be around, you know, dimes. Women with barely got any clothes on. Everything about their body is perfect. You know, and I, but they're the least confident women I have found sometimes. Oh, yeah, they're, hor- they're horrifically. That, I mean, that's a lot of times that's why they'll make dudes jump through hoops and stuff because once they gain a, any degree of power, then that, then they, they, they need to you abuse you with it, become yeah. abusive because they've been abused because they're so insecure yeah. about it. And they, so a lot Dante, of times they won't. Yeah. Is that do you think that's instinctual or is that just supply and demand like human both. nature? It's both. It's both. I think it's both. I mean, uh, I think it's both. I mean, we're you're in a situation. Am I jumping around or no? No, you're good. Uh, what do you okay. mean? Jumping around? No, no, never mind. Um, the uh, the the you know, it, it, I think what happens is they're not as not not as nearly as confident as they want to be perceived as. And then they they haven't had the experience one way or the other. And and they, they you know, they have a problem dealing with whatever the fuck is going on. So and it's, there's also pressure when you're where you, I've never been the hot girl. I know that I'm adorable. But when you're labeled the hot girl, there's yeah. a, a pressure to always be the you know, the sexy girl and keep maintain it. And then you then you, they, then they want you to have the personality to match. It's a lot of work yeah. being that level of good looking. Yeah. Even though we're all good looking in our own way. But I know there's a way that men see a girl and they're like, ah, she's hot. Her ass is big, blah, blah, blah. And then they'll they'll play with her. But then they'll with me, they're like, but I want to see you again. Cause I actually right, want right. to talk to you after I'm done smashing. Yeah. You know, and that's where the difference is. And the older I get the more I'm like, I know I play my position. Like I tried being the hot girl where, you know, high heel, <clears throat> I would do shows in LA and I would wear high heels for a seven, eight minute set. Mm. And I'm like, why are you, 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 you're killing yourself for a short set. Now when I wear sneakers on stage or, or, or boots and look cute as opposed to trying to be sexy, the sets are better. I look, I seem more confident cause I am, I'm not worried about what men think I'm having a good time. And that, 
attracts men, in sure. my opinion, faster than a, a tight dress. Well, you know what? You because you're it's it's a weird thing that we we tell people what we think our worth is. So when you're when you're when you're you, you because I always say this you, when you first meet somebody, I don't know you and you don't know me. So mm -hmm. how do I know what you, what you're worth? You you got to tell me what the price is. You got to tell me what this costs. Yeah. Yeah. And if and if I don't think it's worth something, I'm going to it, it'll reflect the way the things that I say and everything that it'll do with it. That level of insecurity will reflect everything I do. And then you go, oh, you you don't you really don't think you shit. Yeah. And, and then you go, well, who knows better than you? I mean, you are you. So, you know, if you ain't shit. And yeah. so they tell you how to teach. And, that, and that, it's an odd thing, even with a with a, when a guy feels he's a approaching a girl that's more attractive than him mm -hmm. and, or at a different, you know, I mean, yeah. a level, I, or, you know, supposedly out of his league. Mm -hmm. The fact that he, she doesn't know him. He has to tell her <clears throat> what his worth is. Uh, and, and he does that in, in his stance and his walk, the cadence of his voice, the, 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 the level of comfort, even, even that, like, you know, uh, relaxed vocal cords, because mm -hmm. if you if you tense, you, you everything's tense. It, it, yeah. it, so it <laughs> permeates everything that you do. So you're you're there's always this, this you're communicating and you're talking, but there's always this subtext. Yeah, there's this this subtext that's always swimming underneath it. That's what you got to learn to read. Yeah. And because, more people go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, go. That, that's the honest place. They can't they don't even know it's swirling underneath. You know, go ahead. I'm sorry. And I think a lot of a lot of the confusion or insecurity would dissipate if more people would shoot. People don't shoot their shot. Like they're they're yeah. really they're worried that I'm not going to be enough. She's out of my league. He's out of my league. If everyone just shot their shot without worrying about being rejected, you know, you would you would realize there'd be way more STDs in the world. Well, yeah, it's but not all, all something. They're all curable now, Andre. Some of them aren't. <laughs> The ones who aren't curable, you know, God bless you. I like the outlook is positive. Yeah, I'm always positive <laughs> because people are too worried what everybody else thinks. Yeah, you know, that's a fact. you know how many like I've had boyfriends where I know nobody said this to me, but I've had guys in my life where I can tell girlfriends or whatever are like in their head they're kind of like, how in the hell yeah. you get him? And right. I'm like, because I I shot my shot, I, or he I, shot his shot, and we're like, yo, what for people? Yeah, that's all, that's all that matters. You know. Also, and if you and you know if you. If you put your feet on the ground every day and your your intention is to be kind and loyal and credible, that is more valuable than anything. It's like, you know, it's like when you talk like we were talking about Ty, Ty is one of those dudes. And so that current that's currency that we that we take for granted. You know, if somebody trusts you, it's because you're trustworthy. Mm -hmm. You've already earned their trust. This is this is not an they've already made that assessment in the first place. So yeah. everything that you do is congruent with that, with, with being trustworthy. Yeah. Same thing is, is the case with value or, or, or sex appeal or, or confidence or what you think you deserve. Moreover than I was, I was talking to one of my boys and he, he was saying like, he's trying to, he wants to smash some chick outside of the marriage. Right. Ooh. So he's like, these are the type of phone calls Dante gets. Yeah, I get by that. Too. I get no, I'm not I get, judging. I, I trust me. Everyone, everyone's <laughs> journey is their own. I don't judge anything. The uh, <laughs> yeah, but I'm saying only Dante gets these stuff. Very few people in the world. I get it. I get those every once in a while. But Dante gets them like almost. Hey I man, too. I'm thinking about uh, I'm thinking about fucking around on my wife. Let me get your opinion <laughs> on this. I get the same call from a woman who's like, my husband is not doing it for me. I love him, but I need people just ask me about different types of rolling paper. They ask, that's yeah. all they. Yeah, you know, I'm just the pothead. Andre, that's your own fault. You know that's your new you fault. I'm here to supply the neighborhood. Yo, I'm a helpful brother. Yo, Dre, for real though, what kind of ice cream? Should I get after I'm done with this volcano? Like, <laughs> ah, the hugging. Professionally does. speaking, <laughs> rum raisin, rum raisin ice cream. That question. This is a big a sidebar, but you mentioned your clothing on stage and how that affects you, how how you perform. And then I couldn't stop thinking that uh, since the 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 COVID shit started, all these pandemic shows I've been performing mm -hmm. on fucking sidewalks and mm -hmm. parks Cold and rooftops and shit. And shit. Yeah. 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 And then I kind of, if I felt 
the difference of dressing for like putting effort to be fly on stage mm-hmm. and then the effort of eh, fuck it i got a, a sweatshirt and some pants. and it's like i feel like i have more fun in the fuck it I have, you know what I that's, that's your that's your that's in your head though yeah like the the the, the way that you go you know, when i go on stage i should be this is in your head. Yeah, I don't know if I'm thinking that. I'm kind of, I kind of feel blank slateish. Right like now, but you, whatever. we all feel blank slateish. But there's always a parameter. It, it's, mm. you know what I'm saying. It's like jazz. Like a lot of motherfuckers are just very organic, but the, it's still in the confines of of that particular song. There's yeah, certain, no. there's a, but there's you can go all. So so being. You know, the bound, even though you don't think you have a boundary, you have a boundary. There's things you start with that you wouldn't start with you. Things does that it you make see. a difference with what you wear. Um, I, it, I, I think it does. I, I think it, I, I thought it did. And then I realized it doesn't. I can relate to that. There's a picture I posted on my IG. I had just I had flown in from a road gig on a Sunday and I went to the cellar right right from the airport and I had on a pink champion hoodie and jeans and sneakers, which is not my uniform for performing. Mm-hmm. But I remember the set, and I remember pictures I had my hand in my pockets, and, you know, I never had my hand in my And I realized that yeah. some sets where I'm really, really, really dressed down, I do perform in a more relaxed state of mind because I'm like, I'm just here. I'm hanging out with y'all. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm going to run through my thoughts. Not, I'm not really going to do my actual set. And then there are times where I'm, if I'm really dressed up, I realize I'm, that's because everybody came to see me. So I have an obligation to look the way they expect me to look because I do have an image in my head that I I built for myself. So if you you have a way you like to be, if you change your performance style based on how you're dressed, that's all on you because the audience Mm -hmm. will take whatever you give them Mm -hmm. if you're good. Whatever you if if you're already good, you can go up there whatever you want to wear and they'll take what you offer. You know. Yeah, I, yeah I don't, for me, it was always a, a thing about worrying about weight, like a showbiz thing. The audience genuinely doesn't care. But, you know, it's something that affects you. What it affects your confidence. Me? What happened, Andre? No, so like it, the the way you feel in the clothes or like how people see you in the clothes. Like I, I felt the I've, I felt that I've thought about it. Mm. Like I've made made active decisions to change how I dress to change how people are going to respond. Yeah. And I think it makes yeah. me, I think it makes you stand out. Like when I, I realized that I have a natural propensity to dress up. I just, I'm a girly girl. Mm-hmm. And I realized that when I moved back to New York and I was, I became a seller person, I'm like, I would overdress not too much, but you know, you could tell that I thought I was going somewhere special. A little shine on it. Yeah. <laughs> too and much I, of a sign. Exactly. And I've had, I have had comics be like, where are you going? I'm like, this is it. Yeah. This is my, this is my event for the night. Where are you going? <laughs> and then I realized that I, and years ago, it would have bothered me that they made fun of me because I was dressed up. Now I'm like, no, this is who I am. Now y'all know that I'm coming to work and this is what, this is my brand. You got to mm. think, as long as you know who you are and what yeah. you are. Nobody else's opinion is going to matter. Let me ask you this on 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 when you date, does your dress communicate different things? Is that a conscious effort as well? Or do you just go with honestly your 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 truest self? I do both. I do take into account what guys like and what I know will make uh get their attention mm. slash get them horny at dinner what'll, what'll show up the valuable goods how yeah. to show the goods yeah exactly i take people who people act like you know if you're if you're confident it means you don't give a shit what men think i totally care what men think but i know that if i if i feel cute then i'm gonna come off i think i'm, I'm I, think it's, I think it's sexier when you know you look cute yeah, because, because he knows she feels good about herself. Right, right. Therefore, the conversation is going to flow. The drinks are going to flow. The night will flow better if you both right. feel like you are doing it. You know what I mean? That's a fact. Yeah. I hate a girl that got bad posture, like, <laughs> all slumped, shouldered, sad looking. Personal bitch. preference. You like when they're like, "Hey, you out?" You know, put your shoulders like on. a rounded shoulder shirt. Right. Nah, it's not possible to be sexy when your shoulders is all rounded up. And that could, you don't know whether that's because she has scoliosis or low self esteem. Now, are either of those things desirable things? To I, don't, I don't like. I don't like big ass knees. Yeah, I got to think <laughs> about big ass knees. And sometimes when you're a, 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 a actual quote unquote big girl, sometimes your knees are thick and they're kind of round. No, no, <laughs> but not, not. I don't have a problem with thick and thick 
and re- you know, like a big girl's knee. Yeah. I'm talking about a Yo, da, like a da, big whoa. ass <laughs> knee. Like, and, and like Dante yeah. is talking about one girl. <laughs> Dante is talking about one specific know, girl like, he met. I, I know this story, and it's not like a pattern. It's one girl with messed up knees. This girl was smoking hot, but she had just big skinny legs with big ass knees. Like she had, like she was playing volleyball, where she had like knee pads on her. You saying she looked like Patrick Hewen from the knees? <laughs> knees up. <laughs> Couldn't, it just drove me crazy. That's okay. I get that. That's totally okay. Hey, Dante, you were finishing <laughs> up. Uh, I'm sorry, we interrupted you a while back. You were saying a dude had called you up. Oh, he, oh, he wanted to, to he go. wanted to step out. He wanted to step out. And I said, look, this is not for you. I said, because so <laughs> first, first, he, first, he said to me that the girl was hitting on him and and, you know, she was flirting with him and he didn't, apparently he didn't have his ring on him or whatever. And then he he uh, that he, ring don't matter. But go right, right, right. Exactly. But he didn't have his ring on. it. And then she goes, she she's like, well, um, he hits her up. Hey, what's up? You know, boom, 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 boom. She goes, oh, you're married like that. And so she goes, well, you know, I don't know. I, I just don't blah, blah. She's, you know, she, she was didn't crazy. walk away, though. She's but here's it. the thing. Didn't and walk this, away. But this nope. is this. This is the sub- subtext. Yeah. No, no not you, when they go. No, you're married. What she's that ain't a no. That's no, it's not a no a, at all. That's a that's a yes. But these conditions are stopping me. You already got the yes. And you don't even you don't even. But if you don't think that you deserve that, you can't you can't have a side bitch and then don't think you deserve it because I'm confused. Make, say that again. So like if he got a side chick and he really doesn't think he deserves it. Oh, you can't. If you're going to step out slash have anything on the side, you got to be you got to have the confidence to pull that off. You got to have can't be like shit. I. That's not right. you're gonna fuck up your life, your wife's life, her Cause, life. Because she's gonna find out, and yeah. it's gotta. And even to get that to keep the marriages, you gotta be you. You, you gotta have a broad stance to go through that Gangs, and Gangs still bring it. it back to say. And if you ain't, if you ain't you built also, like that, you also have to be ready to manage a side bitch because she eventually will come at you the same way your wife does. Not it's, necessarily. As someone, I have, I have in the past, old Jackie before Jesus. Oh boy. I have. I have had relations with uh, maybe two married men in my life mm. and they 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 kept their family life. It was it was serious. Bottom mm. line, the wife, the children, the home life, they kept it very separate. And you can tell when a man is like, look, I like you. You know, I'm vibing. If you want to hang out. Cool. You can tell when they approach you and they, and they have an obligation right. that right. look y'all, y'all will never cross paths. Right, but right, but, right. A, but a real a, and I shouldn't say this, but a real dude who's confident about stepping out, you can tell when they're something about them is instinctual where you know he's not gonna. Right, ain't, ain't, ain't no dirt not, shit. Ain't yeah, no yeah. Ain't no, ain't no side games. It's like it's, I'll, it's, I'll, I'll see you and we'll figure it out. It's organized. It's structured. It's scheduled. And you know that when I'm not with you, you know exactly what I'm doing. And and, and, and I no got you though. And I got you. Yeah, and we're what doing you it. Need, what you we're need? What you need? I got you. We're doing it, and there's no discussion. Your all your friends don't know about it. All his mm-hmm. friends don't know about it. If it's gonna be on the side and it's gonna be on the low, it really has to be. Mm. Taken seriously and That's on mad the low. fucking work, son. It's work, but not if. Oh, most it definitely. Who you get? If you, you know, here's the thing about men: if you decide to fool around with someone you know you shouldn't be, you need to pick the woman who you know is not gonna fuck your life up. And there's no way to know. It's all a, it's all a crapshoot. But in my instances, I knew like I had my own life. I had my job in my career. This career keeps my mm, head sure. occupied. So I'm like, he don't gotta worry about me crossing over and trying to get him from his family. I'm like, he knows that I have I have a lot to lose. He got a lot to lose. So we're and we both got things to do. We both and we, got and we shit, have shit to, do. to do. And yeah, when I see, the when thing I see is, Jackie, you have your own yeah. identity. That's the big thing. You had your own problem. identity. That's why you got to make sure you pick a woman that has her own identity. And it's hard to figure that but out. But let me ask you this, though. How does that scare them off? Because you have your own identity where you will get a motherfucker who will be like, yeah, yeah, I dig this. And then all of a sudden they were like, oh, she's really that bitch. Now, now I'm insecure because you're really you really are who you said you were. 
And if you got a wife and a family, you need to handle your insecurity. I don't got time to help you be confident. If you're going to come at me. But even if, I'm not even saying married wise, I'm saying just in general. Like, I can't do nothing about that. Then I got to, I got to filter through it. I can't, there's no way to know who you pick. I like how, I like how Jackie's like, hey, I'm here to blow you, not to be your therapist. So you're going to. You I'm gotta get saying, that. You gotta you, go somewhere else. You just, but you, here's the thing: you don't know when you vibing with somebody what the, if the, if the crazy is coming. Yeah, you yeah. don't know. You yeah. so you gotta you gotta hope who you pick is not gonna be the one to jack up your your. Here's, your the, shit. here's the other crazy shit. You don't even realize. I mean, you know, as black folks, we just started going to therapy and shit. You legitimately have people with mental illness oh, that yeah. you're dating. Like, we, you know, like, do you know what it is? My boy's married to this uh, a bipolar chick. Cr- like, not even like, yo, this bitch crazy. Like, yo, this bitch cr- like crazy, it's crazy. Real, real, yeah. Schizophrenia, um, uh, uh, compulsive disorders, all kinds of shit, all kinds of, and then because they have it, they have insecurity and motherfuckers is washing their hands five times and all kinds, and you're talking about real live mental illness along with the fact that you're trying to negotiate and negotiate an intimate or, or an intimate and adult emotional kind yeah. of relationship. That's you got to try You got to try and get out of that. Like I, I dated a guy once that he seemed really cool, but the more, the more time we spent together at some point, he kind of like, Jackie, you know, I'm really jealous. And I was like, there's nobody but you. What is, what's this for? And I'd be on the phone with a dude and I could see him steaming. I realized he's, He's a level of jealous that is not rational. And you have to have the wherewithal to be like, I'm probably going to get out of this because I think he's he going to kill yeah. me at some point. Yeah. So you, you really do have to, if you can. Sometimes you can't leave that easily because you got a kid or you share yeah. in a house, whatever. But if you have the ability to leave when you do sense it, because a woman's instinct, my instinct is to be like, I'm going to find out what's wrong with him and I'm going to try and fix it. We all, a lot of us have that fix it thing. Right, but the right. fix it can't, you can't necessarily transcend mental illness with the whole fix it. Oh, right, 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 right. <laughs> you can't fix it. So no. unfortunately, you got to leave. You got to get the fuck out of there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> ja- Jackie, know? when do you feel like you came into your own? Because you seem you, you feel very confident. You seem like you know what you're doing for yourself. Like, when did that all kind of come to the right spot? I've always been, I think because I've always been a funny girl, not like a class clown, but the, the, the humor is a defense mechanism. Mm. And it's always been to help me get out of, you know, I never had a fight before. Or when I do have arguments, I'll win because I'll throw in a little funny ditty. The, being being funny <laughs> does help you either be real confident or fake it where no one can tell that you're not. Mm. And, I, and, and I think I, I don't really have a, a, my my parents did not raise me to be confident. They were always kind of like, just get a job, get married and shut the fuck up. So I don't really know. I would say it, can't, it, it must come from God and finding out that I had talent, you know, a while ago. And that talent helped me get confident because before that I was always, I was, I, I'm, I, I was the average insecure girl in high school because all of my girlfriends that were, were, you know, light skinned black girls and really pretty. And I was always kind of like, I'm not light. I'm not skinny. My hair is not naturally anything. I've always been a black girl. And so you have to figure out what will set you aside and funny got me out of the circle of are you good enough well i'm funny i can make everyone in this room laugh and that helps so i found out what what made me stand out everyone has to figure out what's going to make you you so that no matter what circle you're in you're like i'm i'm fine i got it you know and that takes years and i would say it it changed my stand-up probably about three to five years ago where i stopped doing what i thought were sets and doing more of this is what happened to me and yeah. I know how, I know how like Dante said to do the structure joke. Yeah. I, know how, I know how to take what happens to me and put it in a structure and yeah. bring it to the stage. You know, tonight I can do it. Get up anywhere. Right. And that, that just took years of nurturing. That's working that muscle. That's working muscle that muscle. And having a lot of jobs that I didn't like, getting fired, f- looking for a career, going to school because I thought I had to get the degrees. You know, when you go. What do you mean? Oh, you stress- mean doing things that you didn't want to do in yeah. the first place? Doing so you appreciate everyone- the fact that you. Yeah. Just- when you when you go through all the stuff that the society and family tells you you should go through, and you're not happy with any of it. Mm. You're always kind of looking. So I was always, always like, I don't like, I hate this job. I don't like school, blah, blah, blah. And it takes years. Sometimes you're not, you, you got to be 40 to be like, ah, this is it. This is what I want to do. Your people Bayesian? 
Jamaican. Jamaican. Everyone's, everyone's Jamaican. Yeah. Jamaican. See, and I always talk about that, like you know, because my, my, my dad, my dad, was from Antigua, right? And yeah. uh, the boyfriend I'm trying to leave is from Antigua. Y'all uh, are a pain. Yeah. <laughs> but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it it's like you have that. My dad, like you said, my dad was like, "Look, just don't die." Um, <laughs> Don't get arrested, mm -hmm. and You're and good. you, I'm I'm a great dad. Like I did, I, I didn't kill him, and uh, he he seems he seems pretty good, you yeah, know. They don't, they don't do much. They just do the what's needed. Yeah, it's just it's, <laughs> but I mean, you think when you think about, I always say when you think about what they've gone through, yes, in the in the course, to just even to get to that point mm -hmm. is something that you go, man, like, you know, I like my, my like I always say that my dad was born 1920. Uh, and so like he grew up in Jim Crow, like in Jim, not like how you read it. So it's like we we end up missing these things out from because our parents are just are just like, let's just not let them die. You know, we yeah. get, we're getting more now more it's into self-fulfillment. It's, yeah. you know, like our generation is, is, is finding that. But I think it started as it started at our generation. Cause, Cause our, before us, it's been about survival. It's been about, I'm an immigrant. I need to, I need to get a job. Mm -hmm. I need to get, I need to get to three live. jobs and, and that's it. Yeah. And, and and we're the generation. We started the whole like, but I have dreams. <laughs> and they're like dreams. What the fuck you dream? What do you, what do you think you have dreams for what? <laughs> Where you so get dreams what? from? Who when I was dream? when I was a little, little kid, I asked my dad like, what a school probably like, what was your dream to be when you grew up? He goes, we were too poor to have dreams. Exactly. <laughs> too poor to have dreams. And I didn't understand that for years. I didn't understand how that worked. And that's like, what immigrant family or immigrant parents. We all have that in common. Where we're the yeah. ones like. I want to figure out this out. They're like, you better figure this out because you yeah. need to eat. Yeah, <laughs> you better figure out this rent. Exactly. That's what you better figure out. <laughs> figure my out that pop, food my situation. Pops, my pops is sixteen brothers and sisters. He used to always Ooh. talk about how he would go. They would go to the butchers and get the bologna rinds and the the salami rind, mm -hmm. and then take bring that home and and make a soup with the bologna rinds. Ain't wow. that plastic? Yeah, you cook, yeah. You cook the meat off. Cook the meat off, off the plastic. Andre, yeah, that's hilarious. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, you don't know that. Like when I would go to, like for years, I would go to Jamaica every summer. I spend the whole summer there. Mm. And my grandmother, the house I went to, she didn't have running water and electricity until I was probably in my teenage teenage years. Mm. So, so prior to that, I was going to you know third world. The, the the fruit the the whatever we pick it the animals yeah, yeah. kill it yeah, I, I, the water I, I, we go get it and yeah. when you realize that that's what you come from you're like I'm mm. spoiled but yeah. whatever <laughs> you know yeah yeah it's a it's a different thing what did your what did your parents your parents stayed together they still together or no 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 they they were were married 49 years. My wow. father died of Parkinson's about almost four years ago. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But yeah, 50 years of marriage. Yeah. They stay together. Was they it a strong? Stayed. Was it one of those marriages where they were in love the whole time? Or sometimes there's like these 50 year marriages like, oh, <laughs> we made a commitment. Surviving. <laughs> yeah, they just, they're just living this life out. I mean, they're, 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 <laughs> I'm sure they loved each other, but they don't live in this world of they just kind of, you know, existed. And she, my mother is typical domestic woman. My father was typical watch TV and watch sports all day long with mm. the occasional drive me to here and drive me there. Mm. And they just, you know, did what they had to do because they didn't think that there's anything else. Well, that's, I'm what the you, one who, that's what you're supposed to do. That's what you do. I grew up with the whole like, I want to do this and I want to try that and I want to go here. Hey. And, hey, and then like, you're going to die. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I'm like, you know what? I'm OK dying if I try. I don't mind dying because I attempted to have a different life. And that's because, and I didn't tell you to have me in America. You could have had me in Jamaica and, and brought me up that way, but you chose to bring you and whatever here. You had me here. So I have the American. In front of all this fun shit. Entitlement. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. You chose to bring me here where they're all doing all this cool yeah. shit. So sorry. I, I'd have been <laughs> home cutting cane. <laughs> that's all y'all. I could have you could have brought me up in the bushes Eat, you eating not bush here. crab. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you brought me here to America where I think your eyeglasses should be Gucci. I can't help that. <laughs> a good point. It's you know? Point. You didn't get here by yourself. Jackie, did you ever get got in a relationship? We always talk about that on the show. Like was there ever one that, that you No? 
Not that I can prove. Whenever I had suspicions, I always, I never. Well, not like that where you were like stuck on a motherfucker, like you couldn't shake him. Not so much. Currently, I'm currently trying to oh, figure yeah. out what Uh-oh. I'm doing right now, and I and I'm it's one day at a time. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! See, I what? think this one. This, this, this might is the be... one. This is Sorry. the one. I I met him in college when I was 18. And but well, nothing happened. He had a girlfriend. We were, we go to school. He transferred out because he was a basketball dude. I stayed and finished, transferred. And we met up like years after we both finished college or I finished and he whatever the fuck he did. Mm-hmm. And we, we fooled around. But I was involved with some I was involved with the good guy. He was the bad boy. Mm-hmm. Long story short, moved to L.A. 20 years but I still kept coming home for holidays and seeing him. And you know what I mean by seeing, even when yeah. I was involved with mm. the serious boyfriend. So I moved back to New you York. You get that holiday rousting. It's got to happen. That's what he was for. So when I moved back to New York, he's like, well, you're back. So now we're going to figure this out. We're going to be a couple. But then I, as the longer I dated him, the more I'm like, he's the same dude that I left 20 years. He didn't change. Whereas yeah. I've had... Five different personalities, different, ver- different eleven lives. different jobs, jobs and lives. So I came back a different girl. He came back, and I came back a different name. Like everything fucking changed. <laughs> and he's like, "This is not." I'm like, "Well, I told you that it was gonna be different." Long story short, we don't have any connection uh, beyond sex. That is how, and that, he, he's what I was talking about earlier. We don't get nothing done because the sex is so good, mm. but we don't have any kind of connection outside of that. And pandemic wise, that is perfect and it was fun. But now we're going into a year of the mm-hmm. pandemic. And at some point I'm like, dude, you know, and I'm traveling again. Like I started working again, like yeah. I was before. I kept telling him, I'm like, dude, I am available all the time now because the world is locked down. But trust me, when the world opens up, I'm gone again and I'm going to be oh, happily boy. gone. I can't wait to be gone. I like and those I, parameters you, you set up. You're like, listen. We could yeah. do this now, but once I got other any other option, I got like any most, other. <laughs> but like most men, he's like, yeah, yeah, I want to take your clothes off, stop talking. In so, all fairness, there've been a lot of like, parameters. Yeah, all right, I'm exactly. just. I'm like, you're, crazy. you're right. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. I've but had a lot of parameters <laughs> thrown my way that I just went, okay, all right, and then it doesn't happen though. In all fairness to men, the other way, there are a lot of. Women yes. do do a lot of like, uh, well, it's either me or the highway. And when you leave, they go, no, wait, 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 hold on, I'm coming with you, <laughs> bitch, yeah. on the highway with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't never tell. Don't never use that as a technique that you don't give a fuck and you give a fuck. I go because then what happened when they turn and go, yeah, all right, cool, yeah. I'm out. And then you like, well, blah, 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 blah. now you you have no credibility at all. And I and I realized that he's just too difficult to talk to. He's a hood nigga, you know, yeah. and, a hood, and a hood nigga. He got, is hard. he got hood nigga dick. Yes, and, he, and, <laughs> and hood niggas are hard to be like. What's our future? And he's kind of like, ah, so, I ain't got no future. I ain't got no <laughs> you. And and his, a black and, man in America every yo, day is a win. That's yo, him. That's future, him. Futures is for pussies, man. Exactly. So, but I'm not gonna lie. To be real transparent, I'm like, look, if and when I financially come up. Well, like, am I okay? Would you here? scoop and scoop him up and just go ahead? You know why? Go. You know why? He's simple. He, he loves to cook. He's <laughs> a dom- he's a domestic dude. So I'm like, you know what? If you want to be the wife and I be the husband, I didn't say that. I'm like crazy. You're right, you're right. In my head, <laughs> in my head, I'm like, you know what? I got the money. You got the house. You yeah. be together. We'll travel together. Which whatever girls love a travel companion. I'm like, you right, know right. what? We can do this. But you go know, here's a motorcycle. Here's you go. a Harley. Go here's ride a, around the park a couple a times. PS Five. Shut up. When, when, when I'm done with my show, I come back to the hotel room. Make sure your dick is out. That was my mentality. <laughs> but we weren't. We haven't been getting along because we. I realize, and my vagina's like, you know, we have to get back to the real world at some point. No, no. And the more I realize that and try to talk to him about it, the more he's like, ah, he's t- resisting everything. So I'm like, you know what? I need to really figure out if he is worth the time anymore. Because yeah. at some point, you do have to turn the lights on, put your yeah. clothes on, and be out in the real world. And he yeah. doesn't do well in the real world. He does great at home. I go to his house. I When I go to his house, he opens the door. He has a blunt already rolled, a cocktail already ready. He made dinner. He's walking around half naked because he knows. Yeah. Once I get in that door. This is, this is what it is. This is what it is. But when we leave, he has no etiquette. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, I can't do this. I'm can't too old. Go to a, can you can you travel with him? Yeah, yeah, I can. I can. Uh, but but he doesn't he doesn't have a driver's license. Like I have a joke. Oh uh, boy, I wow. Have, I, I have, <laughs> that is level five. My <laughs> most popular joke that I've done in the last four years has been about the best lover I've ever had. And it's about him. 
<laughs> and if he heard it, he would cry and be so offended because I wrote it about him. So now I'm like, I need to grow up and realize what I'm worth. So I'm, I'm in the middle of realizing my worth. And he's fun, but he's not the one. Yeah. You gotta, have, you gotta be able to talk to someone, right? Well, unless you get it all set up. Um, Harry, we're gonna, um, Jackie, we're gonna break, not break, but we're gonna, um, just uh, close out. I want you to get all your plugs in and then we're gonna go behind the paywall for On another, Patreon, another 20 for the, for to for Patreon. Those, so, if anyone wants to join us, we're gonna have a little bit more with Jackie Fabulous over at the Patreon. It's patreon.com slash manschool202. Uh, that's where you can join us for all the patrons, and we appreciate each and every one of you. Let's do uh, plugs, Dante, before we go. Yeah, uh, um, uh, Jackie, go ahead. Uh, JackieFabulous.com. Social media, everything is at Jackie Fabulous. And I have a podcast, Relatable with Jackie Fabulous. I want to have you guys on it at some point. And uh, I have a lot of merch on my site. Go buy everything, and that's it. All right. Uh, Dre? Yo, go to, like, Google or, like, your search <laughs> engine. And type Boy. in Andre D. Thompson. Hi. Tonight show. Give your credit. Yeah. What's wrong with you? <laughs> but you if they do that, they're going to see it. Oh, whatever. <laughs> Harry. Uh, you could go to at Harry Turjanian. That's all my social media. Um, also, uh, you definitely go check out Man School 202 YouTube page. So you could see this episode and a lot of other clips as well. And our Instagram page, Real Man School 202. If you could check that out, join us over there because we're going to be doing some more live uh Instagram stuff as well, and uh, whatever happens, it goes on over there. Yeah, it goes uh, on over there. It goes everything down. with me is at Dante Nero Instagram, the Dante Nero. Don't forget the uh, the YouTube page, Man School Two Hundred Two Dante Nero. Also, my page. Um, yo, GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD. What would Dante do? The Sexual Revolution is being podcasted. I appreciate y'all, and I am out. Man School 202 is created by Dante Nero, hosted by Dante Nero with Harry Turjanian and Andre D. Thompson, produced by Harry Turjanian, executive producers Matt Kleinschmidt, Harry Turjanian, and Dante Nero.